Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. Why do babies die? Why do babies die? We know experiences the death of a child is one of life's deepest griefs. And there are many ways to lose a child, such as custody battles, waywardness, miscarriage. But the death of an infant provokes a special kind of sorrow of a life that was never lived. And only parents who have gone through such a loss understand its devastating impact. However, grandparents, siblings, and friends they always wrestle with grief of their own, which arises from the grief, uh, from the question, why? Why? And coupled with that question is often an underlying anger at God for allowing the child to die. For those struggling to accept a baby's death, Please, you can always uh, put all your questions before God in prayer because God answers everything. And often, the first reaction to unspeakable loss is to ask why. However, when we ask why, the situations that uh, are outside our control is often not what we mean. What we truly want to know is whether God is still in control of a universe that will inflict such suffering. Is he punishing us? Is he angry with us? Did we do something worthy of such sorrow? And beneath all questions, we want to know if this child's death deserves any good purpose. And when a baby dies, we only see a wasted potential. We imagine birthday parties that we'll have, we would have spent together with the, with the child, graduations we never saw, the baby kisses that we never felt. And the loss seems pointless, and the perception of, of, of meaningless suffering can fuel anger, depression, confusion, denial, and other negative reactions. But when, when the first waves of grief pass, we may be ready to ask the real question. God, does the death of this child and the accompanying pain serve any good purpose? Now let's look at Psalms 131. It always is a very good passage to go to when life slams us with events too heavy to bear such as a miscarriage or the death of a baby. And I quote, My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters of things too wonderful for me, but I have calmed and quieted myself. I'm like a winged child with his mother. And like a winged child, I'm content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. Theologically, we can say that the reason anyone dies, babies included, is that we live in a fallen, broken world that bears the effects of sin. And we know that Adam's sin brought death, and so death spread to everyone, for everyone has sinned. The Bible tells us in Romans 5.12, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sin. And the death of a baby doesn't sit well with us, and it shouldn't. It's not just how God originally planned it to be. God did not plan it to be like this. Birth 
defects, chromosomal abnormalities and deformities, all factors in miscarriage and infant death are results of death's reign over human life. At times, God may take an infant whose earthly life would be filled with agony. As painful as it is, sometimes the death of a baby is mercy. And we can know that however long the child's life is, he or she is fulfilled God's purpose on the earth. So God saw it fit to take the child home. And we can make general statements about sin and death and deformity, but we can't ultimately know why babies die because we are not God. We don't have the ability to see into the past and future as God can. We don't know the purpose behind many things that God does or allows, but we find comfort in running to Him like a child and resting in His superior wisdom. God tells us that His thoughts are not our thoughts and His ways are not our ways. Isaiah 55 verse 9 And we are glad about that. His insight is not limited by our infinite minds. His experience is not confined to a mere 60 or 70 years on one planet. He is the one who created the planet and the humans who inhabit it. And the God knows far much more than we do about how life works. Revelation 1 verse 8 tells us, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. He is not indifferent to our sorrows, but He sees the rest of the story. God is a father, remember, and he invites us to understand him as we understand a parent-child relationship. And a good parent sometimes allows a child to experience painful events for the long-time good of that child. And likewise, God allows painful events in our lives for the long-term good. A child may grieve after moving to a new city, the death of a pet, or rejection by classmates. But wise parents don't offer to change those things, but they work towards a new perspective, comforting and reassuring the child that it will be all right. God does the same with us. He rarely answers our our why questions, but he does reassure us that it is still in control and it will all be right. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 11 It gives us a little bit of comfort here. It tells us, Remember the former things of all, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, and I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, and I will do it. The Bible is very clear on this. Let's look at Psalms 147, verse 3. God says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up the wounds. So my friend, are you wounded? Are you broken in your heart? God promises that our pain is not wasted if we will entrust it to Him and seek purpose in it. Romans 8.28 And we know all things that work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. God created that child and loves that child and we can trust the creator to deal gently with his human creation and welcome babies into his presence because he's promised this. In Matthew 18 verse 5 the Bible says and so ever shall receive one such a little in my name receiveth me 
but whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, if it were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and that he was drawn in the depth of the sea. This is how much God loves children. Second Samuel 12 verse 23 Think about this. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. These are the words of David when he lost his son. He was like, it's okay, I'm going where that child is. I know where that innocent child is gone. It's for me to walk my way out, to go there and meet that child one day. And even though we grieve, joy comes in the morning. The Bible tells us in Psalms 30 verse 5, For his anger endures but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Regardless of the way the child left us, we have the promise that all who belong to Jesus will be reunited forever in heaven with him. Someday, sorrow will be gone and death will be destroyed forever. 2 Timothy 1, 9-10 Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who was abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And finally, let me read to you the end result of death. This is where death is how it will end. The Bible says in Revelation 20 verse 14, And death and hell are cast into the lake of fire, and this is the second death. After that there is no more death, my friends. And God is going to wipe all our tears from our eyes and everything which has always troubled us and all the misfortunes and all the things that you have felt, God is going to wipe them out. So take heart, I'm sure somebody might be listening to this because maybe they went through such a a hard time. That's why you're here listening. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something and been encouraged. You can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And don't forget to favorite and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new podcast. And uh, if you'd like to support this ministry, please use the details in the description below. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.